With the sad news of Christine McVie from Fleetwood Mac's recent passing, I thought this is the time to make a video, find out what she did, what is so great about her in a bit of a tribute and something that we can learn as musicians. Welcome to Crafty Music Tips. If this is your first time to this channel, well, welcome. I do a lot of different types of videos here on this channel and whether or not you're a musician, you could just be a fan of Fleetwood Mac, Christine McVie. What we're going to do is we're just going to check out some of the things that she did in her life and try and figure out how we can learn from her and get some inspiration, give her a bit of a tribute. And in preparation for putting this video together, I did some research and I was pleasantly surprised that there was a few things that I didn't know about her. And so, yeah, let's get into it. She was born Christine Ann Perfect. What a cool name. Born on July 12th, 1943, near Birmingham in England. She was introduced to the piano at the age of four, but didn't really start studying it really seriously until age 11. And she studied a traditional classical style piano until about the age of 15 when a brother brought home a fat domino songbook and then she just fell in love with rock and roll. Then a few years later, she went to art college where she majored in sculpture. And while she was there, she met some local blues musicians who asked her to join their band. And this then evolved into a band called Chicken Shack, which she was the piano player and lead vocalist for. And they were signed to Blue Horizon Records. And then after this, two things happened. One was that she released a solo album under her maiden name, Christine Perfect. And she also met a guy called John McVie, who was a bass player in a band called Fleetwood Mac, who were also on Blue Horizon Records. And they were then a blues band at the time, fronted by a guy called Peter Green. And she was a fan of the band and she got to know John, really got to know him, they got married. And at some point she painted the Kiln House album cover artwork and would be just checking out their shows a lot and just hanging out. And then Peter Green leaves the band and then they need an extra member and so she gets the gig. Now this is around the time of the early 1970s and so there's five albums that come out with her in the band. And then the sixth one is with two new members Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. And now at this point, it's the mid 70s and that current lineup went on to just have great, huge amounts of success. Now, during the recording and the tour of their biggest album, Rumours, Christine and John, sadly, they broke up and got divorced. But over the years, they stayed friends and stayed in a professional working relationship. Now, something that I didn't know for some time afterwards, Christine and Dennis Wilson, the drummer of the Beach Boys, were together in a relationship. And then after that relationship parted ways, then she got married to a guy called Eduardo Quintella, who was actually a musician himself and co-wrote some of the later Fleetwood Mac hits that Christine wrote with him. Now, here's a quick little snippet of some songs that she either wrote or co-wrote.
So, yeah, some fantastic songs there. I wasn't actually aware that she necessarily wrote or co-wrote all of those. I knew that she sang. I knew that she did some writing. But, yeah, obviously a great talent and deservedly so. Her and her other band members were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998. All right, so just from that info there, what is it that you've learned? Let me know in the comments below, is there something that you learned just from those facts? Here's some things that I've taken on board. The way that she would have been asked in order to have joined a band is that she would have had a good ability. She would have also likely have been a really nice, approachable person. But in regards to her musical ability that she developed, how would have she done that? With a lot of practice, a lot of work, a lot of time spent just honing her craft. Now, another thing that hits home is that she didn't limit herself. She had many interests. She had music and art. She got really good at both of them. And she also was a multi-skilled person within the music realm, within the art realm. You know, with music, she played piano, but not just limited herself to piano. She also played keyboards. And yes, that's different. She also sang She was an accomplished lead vocalist, but fantastic at backing vocal harmonies. And she also had creative skills. So she was a songwriter and an artist. You know, you've got your music and your art. And so she's not just doing what she's told. She's not just learning what other people are telling her what to do. She's creating. Now, another thing that I've taken on board is how much tenacity and strength that she would have had. You know, think about it. She stayed working in a band with someone that she had divorced. You know, that must have taken a lot of inner strength in order to do that. And on a brighter note, she had the ability to write hits. And that's especially special in her case, considering that she's got Stevie and Lindsay right next to her that are churning out really great iconic songs in the same band. And so Christine still writes really great songs that can stand up against theirs. Now, the last thing I'll mention is just something that is really unique to all of us. We all have our own voice. And when Christine sings, she's just got this really unique, identifiable tone. And it's a really lovely voice to listen to. And she just does it so well like no other. Okay, so there you have it. I hope there was a bunch of things that you learnt there. I hope you got a lot out of this video. I know that I really enjoyed doing quite a lot of research, just deep diving into Christine and the Fleetwood Mac discography. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to learn more about music, then there's a heap of other music tips related videos here on this Crafty Music Tips YouTube channel. So that about does it here from me. I'll just say, Christine, thank you so much. Wherever you are, thank you for the inspiration and thank you for all of the great music that you've supplied all of our ears all over the world. So that's it for this Crafty Music Tips video. I'll see you in the next one really soon. Wherever you are, take care. I'll see you soon.